722 on the morning drive. It's uh, Lisa and Mike and Windsor Mayor Eddie Francis joining us, as he does every Tuesday morning. Good morning. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. So uh, dealing with all the audit talk lately, that seems to be the big topic over the past week or so. Are you uh, getting sick of audit talk? No, not really, Mike. Uh, but before I begin, listen, thanks, guys, for sending me that candy o gram this morning. That was very generous of you guys. Well, You're very, you very you welcome. Use a little love this morning on Valentine's Day. But listen, don't eat it all at once because you'll get a tummy ache. <laughs> oh, Lisa. We all know that. Uh, oh, such a mom. <laughs> I, uh, no, I'm not getting sick of it at all because what it does, it allows us to really get the facts uh, and the uh, the truth out there. So the more opportunities to talk about it, the better. Um, obviously, we have a situation where we have uh, an employee that's been terminated. Uh, that termination uh, was not something that was done uh, lightly. Uh, the same committee that hired uh, the Auditor General uh, was the same committee that recommended his termination. Uh, council uh, delegated and pretty much always uh, deferred to the Audit Committee and put a lot of weight into what the Audit Committee suggested in terms of the hiring as well as into the termination. Uh, so that uh, that vote was a three-member Audit Committee plus a ten-member Council, so that was a 13 to one vote. Um, I know that most people have dealt with uh, situations in their own professional lives and their personal lives uh, that could relate to this. When someone is terminated, it's not a pleasant, uh, it's not a pleasant event. It's not something that uh, you leave feeling good about. So, uh, with regards to the present uh, termination, I don't expect uh, the former employee, in this case Todd Langlois, to say anything uh, uh, nice about the city or have any um, uh, any um, um, any judgment in terms of whether it's truthful or not. And I'll leave it at that. At the end of the day, Mike, uh, this is an opportunity for us to uh, really have a good understanding and discussion, and uh, the facts are out there, and uh, the facts are very clear. Uh, the uh, the city council and I have been, uh, from very beginning uh, to now, uh, very, very strong in our advocacy, very strong in our stewardship, and uh, we've kept... Uh, a close eye on the dollars of City Hall, and uh, the cries uh, and some of the uh, rallies that are taking place now by Councilor Haberstadt and others to try to launch another audit into these conspiracy theories, uh, they can continue to do that. At the end of the day, I think the public knows me, they know Council, and they know this administration, and the one thing they can count on is that we always deliver, uh, and we deliver uh, the results uh, with uh, the taxpayers' interest uh, first and foremost. Well, why are audits necessary, and is one given by and looked into by an Auditor General the same or different as one uh, done generally by the city? The Municipal Act, uh, which is the law that governs our city council and municipalities across Ontario, provides for uh, different opportunities for audits. Audits are necessary because it allows the municipality uh, to do uh, its checks and balances to make sure that things are, are proper, uh, that things are appropriate with regards to finances, with regards to controls, with regards to uh, the processes that are in place to make sure that taxpayers are protected. Uh, so first and foremost, you have your administration. Uh, that is administration is made up of professionals. Uh, those professionals, whether it's our uh, chief financial officer or our chief administrative officer who herself used to be a formal auditor, uh, they, they have that check and balance to ensure that that level of diligence is done. Then you have internal audit in some corporations and some municipalities. Internal audit is to review things uh, as management prepares things. So, uh, internal audit review things at the front end. Then you have external auditors. Uh, in this case, our external auditors, they prepare an audit every single year. Uh, in this case, our external auditors are KPMG. Uh, they audit us and they audit a number of boards and commissions. They'll come in once a year, they'll take a snapshot, they'll audit different processes, they'll take a uh, different test, and they'll issue their annual audit. Then you have the audit function uh, of the Auditor General's Office, which basically is to uh, work with the City Council, to work with the municipality as written in the Municipal Act, to ensure that uh, the things that Council or the municipality may assign to the Auditor General are looked at to ensure that there's value for money, to ensure that the proper things were done, and really it's on the back end. What Council has decided to do is to RFP and that is to put that function out to a professional firm. Uh, Mr. Langlois was hired, uh, it was in his contract, uh, that he would be hired to RFP, and that function would be conducted by a professional firm. Uh, he chose not to do that. Uh, but Council's desire is not to get away from audit. Council's desire is to RFP it, uh, to have a professional firm do the work, and at the same time then overlay it with all the other audits that are taking place. Do you feel this call for audits it is more of a personal attack on you? Well, I don't think it's just a personal attack. I think it's a political attack. And when, when I say that, I think you really need to really uh, pull back and, and look at the facts here. Um, back in 2000 and uh, 2006, when the 
Monday Utilities Commission increased their rates. There was a call to bring in uh, the province of Ontario. That call was led by Council Haverstadt and others. The City Council and I agreed, just we have nothing to hide. We called up the province. The province conducted an arm's length audit. Cost the taxpayers of the City of Windsor well over $150,000. That audit came in and showed nothing wrong. Councilor Haverstadt and those groups that led the charge said, well, you know what, they didn't look at this, they didn't look at that. So we moved on to the next issue, the 400 audit. Same type of conspiracy, $800,000 later, and they found the procedural issues, but nowhere close to the conspiracy that was being described. Then they moved on to the next issue. Well, it's WFCU. They're hiding something on the WFCU Center. You know, they're in land deals. They're all this. $160,000 later, the audit came back clean, no conspiracy theory. Now they've moved on to Enway. Mm -hmm. Enway is something that's already audited, it's a regulated industry, so it, it's a never-ending cycle. And what we're saying is, this is taxpayer money. You're spending millions and millions of dollars doing these audits. They're not against audits, but the audits have to be done as part of a work plan. And council and I are prepared to RFP the work plan that was prepared by the former auditor general. We're not afraid of that. Come in and audit all you want. But don't audit it because one counselor or a group believes that there's a conspiracy. Don't audit be, be based on conspiracy theories. Audit because you want to audit, because it's true, uh, so that there's substance, so that there's value. There are a number of other parts of the organization that haven't even been looked at yet, Mike and Lisa, uh, areas where I spend a considerable amount of money. It's got to be done from a reasonable perspective. It's got to be done by an independent person and an independent group, and it's got to be done as part of a risk assessment that's part of a comprehensive work plan. And all of that is delegated to the audit committee, and we follow their lead on that. Okay, we've got to leave it there. We're out of time. We thank you for your comments today, and we'll talk to you.